Lieutenant Daggert. Yes, I sent those reports on to the commissioner. Mm -hmm. Come in. Oh, yes. Sure. I'll see you get a copy of that, Captain. Now, my name is Milton Graves. Oh, yes, you're the fellow who writes for the American Weekly. Uh, the National Weekly. Uh, you said uh, Tuesday would be a good day? Yes. Uh, yeah, you seem to have caught me just about right. I have a little free time now. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Cigarette? Uh, no. Now, you wanted to know something about uh, murder cases, I believe. On uh, crime detection procedure. You see, I'm doing a series of articles on criminals and their detection. And in fact, that's the title of the series, Criminals and Their Detection. I see. Well, I'd be very glad to help you any way I can. Well, that's very kind of you. Now, it would help me if I uh, were to take notes. Sure, go right ahead. I think that the best place to start would be with the actual uh, commission of a crime. Now, uh, suppose that a uh, murder were to have been committed. What would be the standard operating practice? Well, it varies according to circumstances. Now, if the uh, crime were discovered by a patrolman, he would immediately file a report, at the same time making sure that uh, nothing was disturbed at the scene of the crime. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, what happens then? A homicide, of course, sends down a couple of men. See, we work in teams. Now, the scene is dusted for fingerprints, photographs are made of the corpse, the medical examiner does his stuff. You know, the usual routine. Uh, is that a new secret weapon there? The... Hmm? Oh. Well, <clears throat> if there's a bullet in the body, ballistics uh, would tell us well, that. Forgive me uh, for interrupting again, Lieutenant, but this combination of a revolver and a baby's rattle, it fascinates me. Uh, it is. It's, uh, it's you'd hardly call a compatible combination, is it? Now, this revolver belonged to one of the most vicious killers this state has ever known. Uh, you're not going to tell me that he owned the rattle, too, are you? No. No, the rattle belongs to a baby whose father's a policeman. The blast of this gun almost drowned out the sound of that rattle. Well, where were we? Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not going to hook me like that and then let me go, are you? Well, I thought you wanted to fill up that notebook. Well, why waste paper on that routine stuff? Come on, Lieutenant. Reel me in. All right. The policeman is Pete Grayson. His wife's name's Dorothy. I was best man at their wedding. Pete got back from Korea. He didn't have anybody close to him. I guess I was responsible for his applying for the police academy. You know, I never did think that Doris exactly thanked me for that. You know, it wasn't until the day that Pete graduated from the academy that I really began to know her. expected mother today. Early anxious and constantly happy. Uh, how's father bearing up? <laughs> oh gosh, every time the neighbors see him, they run from him. He never stops telling them about that little genius that's coming to our house. <laughs> Public father number one, huh? Well, today's his big day, graduation. Yes, it is. I just thought I'd stop by to congratulate Pete. Well, he isn't here now, but he should be along any moment. Well, I haven't got too much time. Oh, it'll only take a second to say good luck when he gets here. Come on in and wait. He'll be happy to see you. Right. Our friends down at the academy tell me that uh, Pete wound up about the top of his class. He studied very hard, Dad. You know, he could get into almost any division he wanted. I'd been hoping to recommend him for the detective course. I know, he told me. Excuse me? Well, then, why doesn't he want me to do it? He wants to go into juvenile division, you know that. Most rookies would give their right arm for a recommendation to detective school. 
Why this preoccupation with juveniles? He was one himself, and a delinquent one, remember? Orphaned at 12, kicked around till he was 16. He was in trouble. He could have been in serious trouble, only he was lucky, and he knows it. Some of the others weren't so lucky. Boltsom, Alcatraz, Sing Sing, and worse. Yeah, but we've got a good juvenile department now. And Pete wants to be part of it. Don't you see, Ned? He identifies himself with every boy that's in trouble. To help them will give his life importance. But he can't get into juvenile yet. There aren't any openings. He'll wait. Well, I could uh, maybe arrange an opening in detective school. He may be in a patrol car for years before he finds a spot in juvenile. That's what I want him to do. Well, he make a fine detective. Honey, how did I look? <laughs> Congratulations, fella. Thanks, Ned. Honey, I want you to buy four or five hundred cans of badge polish. <laughs> well, kids, I gotta be getting back to the station. What'd you drop in for? You're leaving so soon. Well, I just thought maybe I could do a little missionary work, but I uh, seem to be a failure. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Ned, thanks. Bye. Bye. Now, tell me all about the graduation, Pete. First, you tell me. Did you see the doctor? Mm-hmm. What'd he say? He said I'm a little on the anemic side. Anemia? Mm -hmm. So that's why you look so worried. Oh, don't be silly, darling. There's nothing to worry about. Besides, the mantle is screaming with pills, wanting to take care of that situation. Okay. Now, you sit right down and take your medicine. And as soon as I get it for you, I'm going to get out of this uniform. I want to wear it out before I get started. When do you start? Tomorrow morning at 8. And I got another treat for you. I'm fixing dinner tonight. Good. I'm in the mood for experiments. Here you go. Say, got an answer from the Midwest Insurance Company, huh? Yes, they turned down your application. Occupation too hazardous. So that's what's really been bothering you, huh? Honey, just because some idiotic insurance company decides to turn down it's my... It's all right, Pete. Listen, how about one of those big Doris Grayson smiles? Come on. All right. You know, there are other insurance companies. Insurance companies don't take chances, Pete. Honey, you know, in Korea, the Chinese shot about 450,000 shells, about 7 million grenades, and about 7 billion bullets. And in two years, they couldn't even hit me once. Or do you think that even the Los Angeles bad drivers could touch me after that? I know we agreed that the police force would be right for you. Yes, we certainly did. But that was before the baby was coming. Suppose you get hurt. <laughs> I'm going into juvenile division. You think any kid's going to jump out of his crib and slug me? Promise me something? Sure. Promise me you won't let Ned talk you into that detective course. I promise. Now, you sit here and take it easy. As soon as I get my apron on, dinner will be ready. Now, come on. There's nothing to worry about. Who'd want to hurt me? Besides, when you get your hands on that first paycheck, you change your mind. Bollinger? Yeah. I'm Grayson. I just lost two bits. Yeah? I bet myself you are going to be the only rookie ever to be late the first day on the job. That's what you get for gambling. I just made another bet. What's that? I bet myself you are the kind of guy who liked to drive. train a new cop is to put him into the field with an experienced one. Bollinger was one of the best. In his first six months, Pete faced on the city street most of the situations which the ordinary citizen calls emergencies, but which are routine to the man on the beat. Pete settled into that routine and was happy in his job, and happy with the anticipation of his future family. Six months to go. 
This time, stay out. That's for sure. I don't mean that way. You mean there's another way for guys like us? Sure there is. Once we serve our time... Nobody ever forgets that we were in stir. <laughs> I always forget it when I get on the outside. That's why I keep coming back here. Only not this time. What's going to happen this time that makes it different? I'm trying for a fresh start. I'm going to go to another state. And I'll cut off my hand, so help me, Jim, I'll cut it off. Before I reach for anything that isn't mine. <laughs> I'm tired of breathing frightened air. There are two kinds of people. Frightened ones and those that aren't. Yeah, you're right. There are two kinds of people. Dumb ones and smart ones. Are you saying that I'm dumb? Uh-uh. They say it. You've always got to go around the block to say something. What's taking him so long about recreation? It's not time yet. But don't worry. You'll see Brad before he leaves. How do you figure this? We both do the same hoist. I get six months longer than Brad does. Well, didn't you tell me you were the one who slugged the watchman? Yeah. So it figures. You gonna keep in touch with Brad? Sure. Me and Brad's been pals for four or five years now. He's gonna write to you, huh? Sure. It's about time. So long. Don't get mad, friend. You stopped and talked to four different guys on your way across the yard. Well, I got a lot of friends. They ask you to go in with them? On what? They. On, on what? They're planning a break. When? You steer clear. But if we can get out, I can... We can add ten years to our sentence. I want you to stay away from those guys. Now, you listen to me very carefully. If you try a break and it doesn't come off, they can add another five, ten years to your sentence. You want me to wait ten years and six months for the setup? No, I wouldn't expect that. There's no hurry about you getting out of here. As a matter of fact, six months will be just about right. It'll take me that long to get everything lined up. I'll do anything you say. All right, see what you do, but stay away from those guys. You're trouble. Don't do anything to make these screws keep you here past your time. I won't. I promise I'll keep my nose clean. You can depend upon that. That's the machine shop mating call, Jim. What do you say? Yeah, coming. More than anybody else, that guy I want you to steer clear of. Don't be silly. He's my bunkmate. How can I steer clear of him? Don't spill anything to him. Don't tell him what you're planning on doing when you get out. Don't even tell him when you're getting out. I don't tell him a thing. He's the talker in our cell. I'm the listener. Yeah, he's a talker, all right. He's been known to do a lot of talking to the warden. Oh, no, you got Bunky all wrong. He's no stoolie. That's one thing Bunky isn't. He's no stoolie. You just button up whenever you're around him. You better get moving. Good luck, Brad. Don't worry about me. I'll do exactly as you told me. The anemia has improved a bit, but not enough. It won't affect the baby, will it, Doctor? Oh, no. Just stay off your feet for a few days and everything will be all right. Honey! Please don't say anything to Pete. Hello, Doctor. Hi, honey. Is the city safe with you off duty like this? Ah, oh, the mayor takes all the important streets and puts them in the vault while I check in again. I'll drop by and see you tomorrow. Honey, I'll see the doctor at the door. How's she doing? Childbearing is a wonderful function of woman, but it can be perilous, too. What are you trying to tell me, doctor? 
Well, it may be a breech berth. Breech berth? You're talking Greek to me, Doc. That simply means that the baby is lying in an awkward position. I thought all she had was a slight case of anemia. Well, the anemia is nothing to worry about. It's easy to take care of that. She's, she's going to be all right, Doctor. I'm sure she will. You just leave everything to me and nature. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Well, honey, what's it going to be tonight? Caesar salad? Some veal scallopini? Perhaps a little shish kebab? Topped off with some uh, cherries jubilee? Or if you like the regular eggs benedict, it's... Don't worry, darling. I'm going to be all right. just made the chow line. What happened? Brad was here. Oh, he's back in. Of course not. He came to visit me. Too bad. We're all set, Bucky. Why don't you forget those filthy chickens? I can get you in. Brad will be waiting for me in Frisco. This is the last person that'll see me. What's going on here? I don't know. Looks like a riot. Well, things were really jumping at the prison. <laughs> boys will be boys. Tell me, did the demonstration really swell into a riot? No. They got things pretty much under control as soon as enough guards arrived. Then nothing happened to upset the timetable that Brad Bellows had established. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. This gun was waiting for Jim Miggs the day he got out of jail. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Jim. Hello, Brad. Hiya, Jim. Not much of a place. You can hold up in the wall door as soon as we pull off the job. Look, you can put that stuff down. I'm not going to heist it. Want some? No. It's been two years since I've had my full of candy. Well, you're making up for it in one day, huh? I like candy. Why don't we go in action? Send us to meet the others. Others? Yeah. My wife and a guy I used to be in business with. You never told me you had a wife. I never told anybody. We got married three days before I was sent up. Where do we meet them? They'll call us as soon as they get a car. You got anything to do in Frisco before we leave? No. I hope we got a better place than this in L.A. We have. Jenny, my wife, knows a mark down there who's got a motel. We can hold up there until it's time. Hello? Yeah? Gary and Market? Okay, we're on our way. They got a car, a crasher. Let's go. to go out to all divisions. Yes, Lieutenant. Attention all divisions. Be on the lookout for three men and one woman in stolen car. California license plates. Suspect number one is described as male Caucasian, six feet two inches tall, weighing approximately 195 pounds. Suspect number two, male Caucasian, Well, it was nice. You had to go and make sergeant. It was the only way I could save my kidneys. Don't look so sad, kid. Tomorrow you'll be the top dog in car 22. Yeah, well, don't be surprised if I come whimpering around asking for some advice. Say hello to the little lady. I'll do it.
Hi, honey. Where are you? In the kitchen. Now, honey, I told you I don't want you fixing big dinners. Now, that's too much exertion for you. Sure. Tearing your head of lettuce apart is murder. You let me do that. Go on inside. Oh, don't be silly. I feel plenty strong, and I've got loads of time. Yeah, like about any minute. Get out of here. Get into the living room and sit down. Well, that's better. All right, Mother Hen. I'll get back in the kitchen to see that my roast doesn't burn. Oh, no. A woman's work is never done. Oh, hello, Meg. Come in. Honey, look who's here. Oh, hello. No cracks. <laughs> hello, Doris. How are you feeling? Oh, fine. How have you been, stranger? I haven't seen you in ages. Oh, all right. I've been pretty busy on a case. Matter of fact, I was working on a lead in this neighborhood. That's why I decided to drop in and see you. Well, you'll stay for dinner, won't you? No, I'm afraid I can't tonight. Well, you'll stay for a beer. You can talk to Doris while oh, I sleep. Don't let him do that to you, Ned. You have the beer, but go talk to Pete. <laughs> well, come on, come on in. Look over my shoulder while I slave away. Okay, Ned. One beer coming up. Here you go. Help yourself. Oh, thanks. I could use it. You, uh... Whipping up this dinner yourself? I certainly am. Want to stay? Are you kidding? I don't know what you're missing. You're uh, still riding that patrol car, aren't you? Yeah. I don't know when those guys down at Juvenile are going to get off that dime. Well, I hear they're going to expand that division. You may not have to wait more than a couple of months. Yeah, I hope not. Pete? In a moment, honey. Pete? Are you all right, honey? Of course she's all right. Pete, call the doctor. The doctor? The doctor? What's his number? What's his number? Hempstead 3, 1816. Look, Pete, take it easy. This is nothing. Oh, oh yeah, that's fine. Sure, it's nothing for you. You've had four of them. Uh, Dr. Jansen, this is Pete Grayson. I think she's ready. Where's your bag? In the bedroom. All right, doctor. I'll get her to the hospital right away. Where's your bag? Where's Here's your bag? bag? Oh, she'll need a coat. She's got a coat. Oh. coat. Listen, Ned, take care of her, please. I've got to go out to the garage and get the car. Never mind that. We'll use my car. Uh, the roast is still in the oven. I'll take care of it. Turn up all the burners, too. Look, please, get in the car. I'll take care of everything. That's all I need now is for the house to burn down. Just relax, honey. There's nothing to worry about. Take it easy on those ruts, Ned. I'm relaxed now. Ned. I always wanted to be in a racing police car with the sirens screaming. Sirens? Now, wait a minute, honey. I don't want anything to disturb you. No nonsense. It'll quiet her nerves now. We're almost at the hospital, honey. It'll only be a few minutes. Calling car three. Calling car three. Lieutenant Dagger, get in touch with your station. Gee, I'm sorry we're messing you up, Ned. That's all right. I'll call from the hospital.
This is Lieutenant Daggert. Oh, Lieutenant, there's been a report on that car. It's been spotted at the Radio City Motel on Sunset and... Yeah, I know where it is. Thanks. There, my partner, the car's gone. Oh? The cop on the beat spied the car as it pulled out, but he didn't get a chance to follow it. Uh, all four suspects in the car? Only two, the woman and one of the men. Well, we might be lucky yet. Stay here, keep your eyes open. You the owner? Lieutenant Daggert. Four people staying here, three men and a girl, driving a 53 Chrysler convertible. Yeah, that's right, but they're not in now. Oh, are they all gone? Well, I don't know for sure. I think so. Uh, I saw the car leave. Now, what's their cabin number? Eight. May I have the key to eight? Sure. Go and say, take it easy on my property. This is Monty. You better come downtown with me. I told you I didn't know the car was stolen. And I suppose you didn't know that Ginny and her pals picked up Brad Bellows outside the prison gates? Sure I did. He's her cousin. Cousin? Yeah, he's her cousin. So he spent a little time in jail. She brought him down here so I could help him get a job in L.A. You mean do a job? I mean get a job. Look, Monty, you've been in twice already. Armed robbery and assault. I haven't bet one since I came out, I swear. Well, this time, they'll throw the book at you, Monty, I promise you. Well, you, you got Ginny all wrong. How come she came to you? You've been divorced three years. We were going to patch things up. Whose idea was that? What's that got to do with it? All right, dear. So you put him up at your motel, huh? Yeah. Didn't it strike you as peculiar that she showed up with three cousins instead of one? Uh, why should it? Didn't it strike you as peculiar that the back of the car was loaded with burglary tools? I didn't see no burglary didn't tools. Didn't it strike you as peculiar that the trunk of the car was practically an ammunition dump? I didn't look at the trunk. I'm, not, I'm a motel owner, not a snooper. Of course it didn't strike you as peculiar. You know why, Monty? Because you're in on it. I tell you, you got it all wrong. I want to see a lawyer. Then I want to know where that ex-wife of yours is. Then I want to know where that job is they're going to pull, and I want to know right now. I told you you're on the wrong track. Jeannie's not mixed up in any holdup. She just came down here to patch things up with me. Yeah. You know, Monty, when you're sitting in that cell, and they pull that job that you'll be an accessory? I tell you, you're on the wrong track. Oh, yeah, I forgot. She's crazy about you. Just came down here to patch things up. I want to see a lawyer. You'll see your lawyer in the morning.
Hello? Oh, Pete, it's Ned. Oh, Ned. What is it? What's what? Is it a boy or a girl? Uh oh, it's a false alarm, Ned. They're keeping her at the hospital for a few days, though, just for observation. Oh, she's all right, isn't she? Yeah, she's fine. Ned, you're lucky you didn't stay for dinner. The roast was lousy. You Grayson? I'm Grayson. I'm Mike. Joe Mike. Hello, Joe. Right on time. Well, I guess we better move it. I bet you like to drive. How'd you know? I just figured. I thought you said I could see my lawyer. Warning is no way at money. Okay, okay, so you're in the zoo. Come back at 12 o'clock when they feed the animals. Even a chimpanzee wouldn't fall for the sucker bait you fell for. Bulletin from San Francisco Chief of Police to the CP Los Angeles, dated September 15th. Girl and three men in stolen 53 Chrysler convertible, destination Los Angeles. The girl was Ginny Nicholas. The three men, her cousins. I told you I didn't know the car was stolen. Uh -huh. The evening of September 15th, that stolen car was traced to the Seaside Motel in Monterey. Ginny and her cousin, the one named Brad Bellows, registered as Mr. and Mrs. Brad Bellows. You're a liar. Yeah, I am. But photostatic copies of hotel registers aren't. Again, September 16th, Santa Barbara, the Ocean View Motel. Mr. and Mrs. Brad Bellows, care to try for two? You got a dirty mind, Taggart. Yeah? Take a look at this one, dated April 15th, 1952, three days before Brad Bellows entered San Quentin. It's a marriage license issued at the City Hall of San Francisco. The names on it, Ginny Nicholas and Brad Bellows. See, you're the one with a dirty mind, Monty. They were married all the time. She made a sucker out of you, Monty. They used your motel as a base of operations. Used you to case the job. Wanted you to help finance the deal. Wanted you to help with the operation. Now they're out there somewhere pulling that job right now, and you're here holding the bag. She got you into this, Monty. She got you into it by promising to come back to you, and all the time she was already married. Kill her. She made a slob out of you, Monty. Where is she? I don't know. Come on, Monty. This is your chance to pay her off. Where is she? I don't know. I tell you, if I did, I'd swear I would. But I don't know where she is.
looking for a job. Thanks. Phone booth in the next block up here. Let's pull up there. You're not going to make another call, are you? I'm worried about Doris. What's there to worry about? Look, if I want to worry, let me worry, will you? Okay. before you're out of the anesthetic. Keep counting, Mrs. Grayson. Six. Seven. Eight. You got a dime, Joe? Relax, Pete. Babies are born every day of the week. It's natural. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Two, three, two, three, zero. Girl and three men in green Chrysler convertible. They leave headed huh? north on Where Bronson. Are Bronson? They are Go. armed and... We're just one call. <laughs> Car 22 reports contact with suspect car. Traveling south on Hollywood Freeway. Alert all cars for roadblock construction. Car 1829, roadblock at Figaro and Sunset. 1L51, roadblock at 6th and Alvarado. One eight twenty two, roadblock at Silver Lake and Beverly. One eight twenty three, Hoover and Melrose. Got that?
Star 22 is still in contact. Hmm? 
Hmm? It is, huh? All right, thanks. No, we'll get Marty in here. Car 22, Grayson. We've lost contact with suspects. Got your wish, Marty. They killed Jenny. Who? Her cousins. They threw her over an embankment. Oh, we'll let you identify her later. Right now, she isn't a very pretty sight. It was a long fall. Now, where are they heading, Marty? There's a boat at Fleet's Landing. They're trying for Mexico. Take him out. Car 22 is closest. Call 22. Have them go to Fleet's Landing, reestablish contact if possible. Then alert the Harbor Division. Okay, Lieutenant. Calling car 22. Calling car 22. Thank you. 
This is Grayson. Car 22. You better send an ambulance. We've got one on the way. Pete, this is Ned. Get to the hospital immediately. Give my best to Doris. Yeah, sure. Did you see her? She looks just like you. Was it bad? No, I was... Where were you? Why weren't you here? I couldn't help it, honey. I was so scared. I know. I didn't mean to be a coward, but... You're never going to go through pain again. They say after the first one, the rest are easy. Do you mean that you'd want to go through this again? The only thing that would keep me from having another is your cooking. In that case, honey, I'm going right out and hire a cook. Well, your friend Grayson really had a close call, didn't he? That's a fact. Hey, wait a minute. You're not leaving now. Oh, got to. Got a date. What about the rattle? Where does that fit into? That? Well, I tell you. I'm taking that to my date. He was born yesterday. <laughs> 